Welcome everyone to the MSUM Dragons podcast. I'm joined here by head football coach Steve Lockway. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Excited for this, or I should say I'm hashtag fired up for this. We're always hashtag fired up. On the MSUM podcast, we like to talk about things that are a little bit more than a game. So outside of the X's and O's, let's start today talking a little bit about uh, your journey to coaching the Dragons and kind of how we ended up literally sitting right here. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I'm a small town North Dakota guy, so I, I grew up, um, was fortunate enough to, to marry my high school sweetheart. I, I played at North Dakota State, and I use that pretty loosely. I don't know that I had a very illustrious career by any means, but hey, uh, you know what, I enjoyed my time there. It got, me, it got my foot in the door, got me into coaching, and so I started as a graduate assistant after that. And then uh, from there, went on to St. Olaf College, coached for a year. I was at the University of Minnesota, Minnesota Crookston as an offensive coordinator. Hired back at North Dakota State University, uh, and then from there, I felt like you know my life needed a little bit of a different direction. Um, I think professionally, life was great for me. Um, you know, we were ten and one my last year there as mm -hmm. coach at my alma mater, and, and really life was life was really good. Um, you know, the rest of my life probably wasn't super awesome, and so um, looked to make a change, and so I ended up coaching a high school in town here at Fargo Shanley. Uh, did that for four years, was fortunate enough to have a pretty good run there the last couple of years that we were there. And, um, you know, that kind of opened the door to, to here. And, uh, you know, that's that's how I ended up sitting here. Uh, I was lucky enough to, to get the opportunity. And, you know, it's the last nine years has really flown by. And it's been uh, it's been a joy. It's been exciting. It's been great for our family. Um, you know, my wife and I as, a, as, as parents, as um you know, a couple, and it's it's been a great thing, and hopefully, it's been a great thing for for the university and the student athletes that are part of it as well. Uh, I want to go back to that moment uh, that you just mentioned about the difficulty of stepping back from coaching uh, to focus on your personal life. Uh, anybody who works in athletics knows it's it's a crazy environment, especially college athletics. To raise a family, um, start things. I know that's one of the reasons why I got out of coaching, and. Talk a little bit about kind of how you balance your family life and being a football coach. Yeah, it's you know it's difficult. Obviously, it's a you know it takes a team and it takes probably a, more than a team from that standpoint. Um, but I think it you know it starts communication wise. Just my wife and I have just you know the logistics of you know how are we getting everybody where they need to be and getting them fed and, and getting things taken care of and you know so I think communicating there. But I think on a bigger picture of you know what are we really trying to accomplish with our children and then how do we be able to match and mesh our schedules to be able to make that happen and so it's been you know nice here that I think um, you know I'm able to bring my family life into my work in the sense of hey being a dad's important family is important I think that trickles into our program where it feels like a family and, and things that families do are important and I think um, being able to to set that tone to be able to have our players over at the house to eat and throw bean bags and you know play horse in the in the in the backyard whatever it might be I think those are all things that that kind of blend together nicely that hopefully are are good you know modeling things for our student athletes I think they're great for our, our kids they're around some of their their heroes that mm -hmm. they see out on the football field and so it's um you know it's a challenge um, both my wife and I professionally uh, we have seven kids or eighth is on the way uh, mm -hmm. shortly here and so it's um you know it balancing those two things and that was the challenge why i got out of college athletics the first time was just i couldn't manage the the home being away from home so much and feeling saying i want to be a good dad and husband but really not being there when when the rubber needed to hit the road and so i think we've been able to balance that pretty well and strategically say you know what home time is home time and we need to take vacation time for vacation time to recharge and and um, you know the balance for us is but we've been able to make it work why did the opportunity at MSUM spark you to get back into that world that you wanted to kind of bounce out of for a little bit yeah you know I felt like um, you know in my, my journey into high school I think transformed um, why I coach you know I think before it was more maybe transactional and about the end goal of winning and you know getting to the NFL and whatever that might have meant and I think in you know, my journey from high school back to to here was just the fact of you know what what really is there besides just winning you know in, in my first couple of years here and my first couple of years at 
Fargo Shanley there, you know, no matter how good I think I was as a coach, we weren't winning any of those games. And so, you know, I had to face the reality of then what are we doing and why are we doing it? Um, and, you know, how can we, you know, do more than that? And so only so many guys can play. And I think we did a, you know, I think the backbone of our program and its philosophy was built out of those times of trying to give back and help develop people as people, not just football players and trying mm -hmm. to use the experiences of football to prepare them for the game of life. And, um, once we got successful in high school doing it and this opportunity was there, I just felt like, you know what, I think the same recipe can work in college athletics. I don't think you have to sell your soul to the devil. I don't think you have to sell out to the, you know, when it all costs. And you know what, um, I think you can do it with great young men who, who believe in, in things that are more than just a game. Obviously, they want to win, but I think they also see the end game, too, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, they're not going to the NFL. They are going to the game of life. And um I think our philosophy appeals to a, to a lot of people, and I thought that you know we could do that, not just to transform them for beyond life, but I felt like we could win at the highest level doing that too. And um, you know, I guess that's the that's the chip on the sh my shoulder. I think that mm -hmm. keeps driving me to prove that you know what we can have both. You can have great kids and uh, focus on you know being more than a student athlete. You can have a great focus on winning, and you know I think you can have a great focus on being balanced in your home life and in, in your marriage life, and so on. Um, those are the things that kind of drive me, I guess, to succeed and prove that, that we can do those things at a high level. And you, you mentioned that it wasn't always that way in your mentality. Is there something that happened that shook you into this, it's more than winning, it's more than a game kind of mindset? You know, I think the reality of um, after a 10 and one season at NDSU and some of the doors that opened professionally, um, I think, that kind of reality hit me in, in my face of, wow, there's some great doors opening professionally that this could lead to, you know, bigger stages, more money. And then all of a sudden right behind that was, oh no, what's the rest <laughs> of my life going to look like? Yeah. I'm barely keeping above ground now trying to manage a, a family and, and a marriage this could really get bad. And then I think that was kind of that, that wake up moment of what, what are you really doing here, Steve? And um, what are the things that are really important? And you really got to kind of lay claim to what path you're going to be on. Um, you can't say you want certain things and go down a different path. It's a cause and effect world. And so I think that's, that was the beginning of my, my reality check of, you know, what was the end game that I was really after. And then, Confronting that, you know, in my first high school practice, realizing this is the worst football I've been around my entire <laughs> life and there's no shot of winning a game. Okay, yeah. what are we going to do here? And I think that all kind of came together at the right time. Um, you know, at the time, you know, you wonder why you're going through that or, you know, you know, what path that you're on. But, but it was all for a reason. I'm glad that, that I went on it and I'm glad that I came out of it the way I did. And I think that has a lot of parallels to kind of the beginning here in the situation that was not unfamiliar to you. I mean, you'd gone through uh, what it was like taking over a program that didn't have a winning record, and then you went on and did it here. Um, what were those kind of parallels at those kind of levels that allowed success to begin to build? Well, I think, um, you know, philosophically, our program, we, we weren't built around winning, probably because we couldn't win no matter <laughs> what, but we were focused on progress, you know, getting better, uh, committing to each other, committing to, you know, buying into everything that you needed to do. I said, winners, to be a winner, winners got to do win, win things. You know what I mean? And you can't do losing things and end up winning consistently. And so we were just trying to buy in to do the things that winners do. And eventually, if we stay persistent enough and focused enough, we're going to win. And so I think the challenge really was to commit to a process, to commit to something bigger than yourself, um, a cause of kind of turning the ship around and writing it and, and laying the groundwork and the path and the foundation for those after to maybe reap the rewards. And um, we didn't focus on winning, we just focused on getting better and we focused on growing together as a team and overcoming the challenges that, that we put in our face. And I think um, you know those, those groups that went through those no win or low win seasons were pretty special because they, they were willing to do that. They were willing to take their focus off the end result and really just commit to, to the process and be able to find satisfaction and peace and knowing that they gave it everything they had, even if they didn't get the results that they wanted. Kind of a short-term versus long-term 
mentality? Without a doubt. They, they had the long view in mind. I think not just for the program, but I think in general in life, knowing of, hey, you know what, if I can just commit to a process mm -hmm. to doing the right thing over and over and over, eventually, you know what, I'm gonna see the results that, that I want. Um, and there'll be some ups and downs with it. And so, um, you know, I think this program is indebted to those guys that were willing to do that. And I think that's uh, what makes it special when they come back and they're able to really feel like they're a part of the success we're having now. Because if it wasn't for them, it'd be the same old story. You can see the same college athletics programs that are dumpster fires or dumpster fires year after year after year. Um, takes a special group and I think a special mentality and philosophy to get out of those and you know what we were fortunate enough to be able to, to have the right the right two at the right mm -hmm. time and before we go too far into uh, the team now and, and stats now and all that kind of stuff um, your coaching story did you have a any other sports you played growing up or were you pretty football focused uh, I was a multi-sport athlete um, basketball baseball football Mm -hmm. actually liked basketball the best, um, probably because you could just do it whenever you wanted. And in small town North Dakota, I had keys to get into mm -hmm. to the gyms to be able to shoot and, and work on my game. And again, just commit to the process. Um, but I wasn't quite good enough to have doors open for me. Um, and I don't know that I wanted them to anyway. I, I was always kind of captured by um, coaching football. I think a lot of it had to do with our high school coach. Was a, you know, he's a National Hall of Fame high school coach and I'd, I'd been around it. I grew up across from the football field so I was a student manager from the time I was hmm. knee high to a grasshopper and so um, you know I think it was always in my blood and you know it, the, the str strategy of the game really uh, attracted me to it and you know my, my high school coach kind of gave me some leeway my senior year to call my own plays and I think that uh, kind of hooked me and you know I was in the profession from there. I think um, my mom gave me a great piece of advice in high school when, when you're looking at schools and all these options of different things that you can do and maybe professions that can earn you a lot of money and she just said, you know, love what you do and do what you love and you know, you'll never work a day in your life and I feel like uh, I followed that advice and things have taken care of themselves and I really don't feel like I've worked a day in my life. I feel like I'm my hobby and my job and my passion are all into one, and so it's um, it, it's great to come to work. I think you might have answered the question, but I'm asking it anyway. Favorite coach you've ever played for or coached with? Oh, you know, I've been blessed with so many good um, role models, not just from high school to college. Um, I mean, I think it's like half a dozen guys I've worked with have ended up in the NFL. Um, but I, I would say the one that uh, probably had the most influence on who I am and my attitude and how I conduct myself day in and day out is probably Gus Bradley. Uh, he recruited me at North Dakota State. He was a defense coordinator that I played under. I got to coach with him for three different years. You know, he's a former Jacksonville mm -hmm. Jaguars head coach. He's a defense coordinator in the NFL now. And I think his personality and attitude were electric. They were magnetic. Um, you know, my family um, was so appreciative of everything that he did while he was there. As when I was a student athlete of being willing to put on a happy face even after a loss. And I think that's carried with us in, into this program of after games, we're gonna take time and make sure we talk to our families and the people that are invested in the program and have a genuine ap appreciation for you know the, the commitment and contribution that everybody makes to the program on or off the field. It's a, this whole thing is a big deal, I think, that we're part of uh, within you know, not just our athletic department, but our campus and our community. So, so a lot of people that, that make this thing happen.